So but before we go into those three truths, let's go into why we celebrate Christmas. Because there's this growing sentiment among Christians, and I would say it's not many Christians, but enough Christians who actually wonder whether or not it's biblical to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And so I thought, well, why don't we address this as our Christmas message here? Because we're celebrating Christmas, so the question is, is it biblical to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? And I hope this answer is pretty easy for most of you, because um, I think Scripture makes it very clear that we are to celebrate this event. So, if you would open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 1, let's, let's answer the question, is it actually biblical to celebrate Christmas? I'm not going to get into, is December 25th the correct day? That's another debate for another time. But we do know historically that Jesus was born on the 25th day of a month. And also for people who like to say December 25th was a pagan holiday, well, this December 25th in the calendar that we celebrate is not the 25th day of the pagan holiday that used to be celebrated. So the calendars have shifted. We're not actually celebrating Christmas on a day when pagans actually celebrated their holiday um, we are actually on a different 25th day. So we know Jesus was born on the 25th day. We don't know that he was born in the December. But also I got to ask the question, if there's a day that pagans use, does that suddenly mean it's no longer God's day? Does that mean pagans own that day and Christians can't do anything on that day to celebrate God? Like, whoa, you know, it's Halloween, we better not do anything special on Halloween because that's the day that the devil owns, right? No, Satan doesn't own Halloween. We don't celebrate Halloween, just in case anybody's freaking out that I'm like saying, go celebrate Halloween. But you know what my family does? We're like, there's nothing wrong with dressing fun and having candy, so we just call it candy day. Because why does the devil need to own a day? He doesn't own any day. The Lord is the Lord of all days. And so even if we celebrated Christmas on the same day as pagans were celebrating a day, the pagans still wouldn't own the day. But the, it's not the day that the pagans celebrated in ancient, um, in ancient times. It's actually a different day. And we do know Jesus was born on the 25th day of a certain month. So that's where the 25th comes from. But is it biblical, then, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? So in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 44, let's read this together. It says, In those days, Mary, that's after finding out she was pregnant with the Christ, arose and went with haste to the hill country, to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now watch what Elizabeth says under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Jesus wasn't even born yet, and they were already celebrating. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit. They were rejoicing under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Whose idea was it to celebrate? The Holy Spirit's idea. It was the Holy Spirit's idea that they rejoice. So the Holy Spirit is telling us this is something people should rejoice. Not man's idea, the Holy Spirit's idea. 
And then Mary is filled with the Spirit herself, and she begins to sing out a song that we know as the Magnificent. It is a song that she proclaims about Jesus under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And it says this, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So you don't have Mary saying to Elizabeth, Elizabeth, it's not biblical to celebrate this. You're overreacting. There's nothing special here. No, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Mary herself also celebrates the birth of her son. And her son is not yet even born. So what about the angels, the messengers of God? How did they respond to the news when Christ was born? So if, if the godly people, before Jesus was born, Elizabeth and Mary, celebrated the birth before it came, what about when Jesus was born? It says this in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Why great joy? Verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And then notice how the angels of God responded to this news. And suddenly there was a was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Well, wait, it says they gloried in God, not the Christ. Well, who is Jesus? Jesus is the God that they are celebrating. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Now watch this, verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for what they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So God clearly sent the angels to celebrate, and he expected the ordinary people of the land to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, but that was a one-time event. We don't, need, we don't need to celebrate that now. Like, when people say that to me, it's like saying, oh, yeah, well, Jesus died on the cross. That was a one-time event. We don't need to keep celebrating the fact that he died for our sins. Really? It seems to us that these things were written for us today. And if we are told to rejoice in the birth of our Savior, that we too today should rejoice in the birth of our Savior. There isn't an effective argument against celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I know some pretty stingy people who come up with excuses for why they shouldn't celebrate Christmas because they don't want to spend money on their family. It always seems to be like stinginess, anti-Christmas seems to go hand in hand. And I don't know what it is. It's not that, I don't think it's because they don't really think that it's not biblical. I think it's just, they see Christmas as something robbing them of their money.
So should Christians celebrate over what the shepherd celebrated? How about should Christians celebrate what God's angel celebrated? Should Christians celebrate what godly people like Elizabeth and Mary celebrated? What about should Christians celebrate what Scripture celebrates? What God celebrates? What the Holy Spirit celebrates? You can't tell me that Christmas isn't biblical. You can tell me that you're stingy, and I'll believe that. But you can't tell me that Christmas isn't biblical. 